Welcome to Grace Online. My name is Tierra Willis, and today I will be bringing to you your prayer focus. Today's prayer focus is God's provision, and I will be reading from the scripture, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8 in the NLT version. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As we think of God's provision, we should think of it in a way that is just as great as our God. He always does it seemingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think. And so because he is Jehovah Jireh in our life, anytime that we have a need, we should know that he's going to provide and not just enough for us, but enough to share for others. So in this season of Thanksgiving, in this season of thankfulness and gratitude, we wanna be able to not just fill our storehouses, but to have enough to share with others. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you even right now for just giving us your provision, God. You are always covering us, protecting us, keeping us, God, through all situations. I thank you that even as we go into our next week, even as we go into this holiday season, even as we go into these months that are ahead of winter, God, that you have already provided for us, that you have already given us your provision, that you have already covered us in your love, your safety, your comfort, and most of all, have met all of our needs. And because you have done those things, God, allow us to have those grateful hearts that will quickly be those that give back to those in need, give back to those that are in need of a helping hand, in need of that extra support in this season, in need of just knowing your love all the more. And so God, we thank you for just giving us your love. We thank you for pouring out over us continuously. And we thank you for the ability to turn around and do the same for others. In your precious name we pray, amen. Thank you for joining me for this prayer focus, and now let's get into service. Let's lift our voices and worship him. Let's offer him the fruit of our lips. We serve a God who's comforting in so many transitional seasons that we may face. A lot of times life will present itself with overwhelming situations. We serve a God who is our glory and the lifter up of our head. Even in difficult seasons. So we're going to sing the word of God coming from text Psalm 3. Um, it's an old song, but the words and the, the, the message is still relevant today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you as our glory, as our king, and as the lifter up of our heads. Lord, how are they increased? that troubled me. Many are they that rise up against me, and many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God, so we say. Of my head. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Verse 2 says, I cried unto the Lord. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. And he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down and slept. Oh, I awake. Sustain me, but thou, O oh Lord, but thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. My glory, my glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. My glory and the lifter of my head. Oh. Hallelujah to the great King. Let's sing verse 3. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. Say, for thou, O oh Lord, but thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. 
Verse 3 one more time. I will not be, I will not be afraid of 10,000 yeah. people. Yeah, that set themselves that against, set against me round about. Oh, my brother, oh, my sister, be encouraged today. I will not be afraid of 10,000 people. That set themselves that against, set me. Themselves round against about. me round about. Why? Because thou, oh Lord, thou oh Lord yeah. are a shield for me. Shield for me, yeah. my, glory. my glory, and the lifter of my Come on, lift those hands. God, I'm a pushing to the We worship you, Almighty God. If you lift our hands. We say thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Yeah. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. Come on, say. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. One more time, say. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Come on, say thank you for holding me. Thank you for guiding me. Despite the test and trials, you lift my head. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. Come on, put it in the comments. Come on, say thank you for direction. Yeah. Thank you for protection. You never leave us or forsake us. You lift my head. Yeah. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. One more time, say thank you for holding me. Yeah. Thank you for guiding me. Thank you for lifting. But thou are a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. Come on, but thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. My glory, the lifter of my head. But thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. Listen, I will not be afraid. Terror that comes by night, no, the error that comes by day. Thou, O oh Lord, Lord hey. surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. For thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me, shield for me. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. Pray. You go before me. You go around me. You always protect me. Watching over me. Shield for me. Shield for me. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The Lord is with me. The devil is a liar. The Lord is with me. The devil is a liar. He's always with me. The devil is a liar. He's a shield for 
you right now. Shield for me. Shield for me. Come on, bless him, bless him, bless him. Declare over your life. He's lifting me. He's lifting me. Hey, he's lifting me from a horrible pit. Hey, from the miry clay. He's lifting me. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Hey, he's lifting me. He's lifting me. The joy of the Lord is your strength. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises will be condemned. I won't be afraid. Surely goodness and mercy. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me every day. Yeah. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. He's lifting me. He's lifting me. Out of depression, he's lifting me. Out of distress, he's lifting me. Out of heartbreak, he's lifting me. Out of heartache, he's lifting me. He's lifting me. If it's anxiety, whatever it may be, if you're grieving all night long, he's lifting me. Out of sickness, he's lifting me. Hey, he's lifting me. He's lifting me. He's lifting me. He's lifting me. Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Hey, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Come on, the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. 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 The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is mine. He's lifting me. Protecting me. He's keeping me. Keeping my mind in perfect peace. As long as it's staying on him. He covers me in my right mind. He keeps me in my right mind. He keeps me in my right mind. The Lord is your strength. Come on, say. Be encouraged. Encourage somebody. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord. He's lifting me. Secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow. Shall abide under the shadow. Shall abide under the shadow. He covers me. 
Oh, you ought to praise him right there. Come on. Oh, bless the name of the Lord our God. He is our shield, our buckler, our comforter, our protector. He's been our everything. He's covered us. And from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. He has sheltered us from all harm and all danger to see this part of the year. We are blessed to just be here, to be alive, to have health and strength and even the cognizance to call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says that they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so, Lord, you're saving us, you're delivering us, you're healing us because we're calling on you to lift us up above our enemies. Now shall our heads be lifted up above our enemies. Though a thousand will fall by our side, ten thousand by our right hand, it shall not come nigh us. Only with our eyes shall we see the reward of the wicked. You are our shield and our buckler both day and night. Therefore, we are not afraid. We are not afraid of the enemy and we are not afraid of what he can say or do to to try to discourage us we stand firm and solid on the word of God that we are more than conquerors and that you've ordered our steps so every challenge and every situation every circumstance that we face father we know that it's not the end of us it's the beginning of greatness it's the beginning of victory it's the beginning of overcoming it's the beginning of us being everything that you've called us to be despite what we face despite what we go through despite what we've lost despite what we still yet Yet have to gain you are God and you are God alone there's none like you in all the earth so we take the time to stand above our circumstances to stand above our situations to put our foot in the neck of the enemy and run through troops and leap over walls and proclaim victory throughout the rest of this year to claim victory going into next year to claim victory as we enter into this season oh God of the end end time the end of the days we're grateful and we say thank you Lord for blessing us to see see it happen you've blessed us to see it happen you've blessed us to see it happen so now we have testimony now we have testimony there are those who are out there with testimonies of having been healed having been delivered and set free from bondages and from things where the the enemy thought he had you he thought he wiped you out the doctors even shook their heads and said there's nothing else that we can do but you're here today to testify you're here today to tell of the goodness of the Lord. You're here today to let the love of God flow out of your heart even now. So I encourage you to tell somebody. I encourage you to strengthen somebody with your very words of encouragement. We're going to go into the word of the Lord. And this month has been a month of thanksgiving. But we have also focused our thanksgiving on overcoming challenges and overcoming the challenges that the enemy specifically has put in our way. As you can see, this challenge has been dismantled. As you can see that there are elements that are still standing, but yet the challenges are not greater than we are. In fact, we can sit upon our challenges as being the foundation of our next level in God. I'll say that again real slow while you're settling yourself. We can look at our challenges as the platform for our next level in God. So whatever it is that we overcame, whatever it is that we were challenged with, we can stand and rise above it. We toppled the works of the enemy through the word of God and through our faith in believing God, believing him for being who he is and everything that he said is true. What he said about you is true. What he promised you is true. What he stands for, the very virtue of your existence is deeply rooted in your ability to believe the truth. The Bible gives us Bible truths that apply to everyday lives. And so as we get into the word, wrapping up this last part of the series, I want you to take a look at your challenges and how they are toppled and they're falling. Uh, but we don't ignore the fact that they exist. In fact, uh, they're noisy and cumbersome, and sometimes they still get in the way, even though they're at our feet. I want to encourage you that through the word of God, we learn strategies and ways. And today I want to talk about the secret of thanksgiving. This is to wrap up and bring a culmination to the entire message series that there's a secret behind thanksgiving. It's a secret that I discovered. And when I say secret, I mean it's something that was not openly revealed. A secret is something that has to be uncovered. It has to be discovered. It has to be something that we release with understanding um, strategies and ways to execute whatever that secret is so that it can be applicable 
to our lives. Let's go to some scripture. I want to share quite a few verses with you today. I want you to get your Bibles. I got my trusty, uh, I don't want to say dusty, but my trusty um, uh, paper Bible, trusty, dusty paper Bible, because our electronic Bibles are good and fine, but there's nothing like turning those pages. There's nothing like being here in the house of the Lord with a Bible turning pages. That sound gives us a sense of confidence and strength. Go to Psalms, Psalms 92, Psalm 92. And we're talking about the strategies of thanksgiving or even the secret of thanksgiving in using it to overcome our challenges. Hopefully you've been taking some notes. In Psalm 80, 92, 92 verse, verse, reading from the New King James Version, it says, it is a good thing. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. It's good to give thanks unto the Lord. Which means that if it's good to give thanks unto the Lord, it's not good to not give thanks unto the Lord. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and the opposite of that would be it's bad if you don't. It's good too, bad if you don't. Now, that's simplistic enough that maybe even your fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders at home can comprehend that it's good to give thanks unto the Lord. Now, we also know that gratitude is one of the things that opens up doors for us. We shared in the very first message that gratitude has at least seven different things that it, it does to our lives, one of them being given us the emotional intelligence and fortitude that we need to have good relationships. Another one, being able to sleep and become healthier in what, um, what we've been given as a reasonable portion of life and health and strength. So, so, so gratitude and thanksgiving plays a significant part in our existence, but also how we exist, our quality of life. Not just the quantity of life, but the quality of life. I was talking to someone the other day, and they said, I want you to know that if I pass, they, they shared this with me, that I've missed nothing and I'm grateful for everything. That's what they said to me. I said, wow, you know, those are kind of, kind of scary words to hear from somebody who's alive and healthy. But they said, let it be known and, and put it on record that every trial, every situation, every circumstance, every negative thing that someone else would write me off as being po possibly foolish or having failed, they said, they said, count that up as something I am grateful for because I don't record losses, I count them as lessons. Now, I've often said that, so it really registered to me when they said that. They said they're not losses, they're lessons, which, which gives hope that if we learn from our experiences and we learn from our challenges, whether we have overcome them or whether they have been in the way, we still have the opportunity to do something different. As it says, it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. I was just going to read the first verse, but the second part of the second verse is instructional. It just simply says to declare loving kindness in the morning and faithfulness at night. This is to dissect the type of thanksgiving that we give, because if I give you something and you say thanks, that's fine. If I give you something and you say thanks, I really appreciate it, that even moves it closer. Or if I give you something and you say, thanks, I really appreciate it, it meets my need, we've now entered into a dynamic by which you are attaching or attributing what it was that was given to the basic need that you have and your level of gratitude. Now, remember, our challenges had levels. Our challenges were in steps and levels. And last message, we talked about step by step overcoming those challenges. But if every level and every step of a challenge is even more challenging, then every level of gratitude or thanksgiving is more powerful. So if I just say thanks, then it's just that, thanks. If I say, thanks, Father God, I appreciate you, then that's entering into the dynamic of who he is and how I feel about him. I'm just giving some basic instruction. And then if we go to the third level of gratitude, the third level of gratitude is thanks, I appreciate it. And then we ascribe value for what he has done specifically. You bless me today to live in the midst of certain circumstances or the accident that happened or the occurrence that, that transpired didn't wipe me out. And I'm specifically grateful for that. Now, as you can see, I'm trying to show a progression in our gratitude because the progression of our challenges are clear. First, it's difficult to do this, and then it's difficult to do that, and it's harder to do that, and it gets greater and greater. And we make mountains, I know you're going to say out of molehills. No, we make mountains out of mountains. Where the scripture tells us that we are to speak to mountains and tell the mountains to be removed. It didn't say dissolve the mountain, tear down the mountain, or climb the mountain. The scripture says that we speak to mountains, we speak to circumstances, and tell them, move, get out of the way. 
We speak to our circumstances that had surmounted as challenges, and as we see them, we now know them. You understand what I'm saying about that? When we see them, we become familiar enough to know them. And if we show gratitude, there is a secret connection between you and God when you show gratitude. Let's go to another psalm. That was Psalm 92. Let's back up in the psalm a little bit, and I want to show you something else. It says in Psalm 37, Psalm 37, verse number 23. I shared this in the previous message, that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his ways, though he fall, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I want to show you the secret in how to apply victory in a situation where you have taken the toppling fall and have to walk the walk of shame. I know that was a quick turn, but I want to show you this because if we understand the secrets, the Bible tells, tells us that the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him and he will show him his covenant his dynamic with us. That's what the Bible says. Let me show you that in the scripture, it says that our steps, if we took our challenges step by step, it says that they're ordered of the Lord. Now I'm deciding to go toward these challenges and try to take a step on unsure and, un, and, un, and ground that's not very, very firm. So my footing is going to be um, somewhat compromised and it's going to be hazardous for me to step into situations that really don't have much to do with me. They were set there to be roadblocks and God gives us the power to overcome them and to topple them, but they're still somehow in the way. And if I'm not careful, if I become entangled again in the situations, I will fall. I can fall, might fall, but will fall. When we fall, not if we fall. You say, well, you have to explain that, Pastor, because we're, we're overcomers and we're not supposed to fall. Let's be real. Everybody's had some level of failure or some level of defeat in their life. It comes with the process. In fact, failures aren't final. Failures introduce us to fortitude. Failures are not final. If anything, the reason why Jesus died is because he saw your failures in the future and now has made it a part of your past. I'll say it again. He saw your failures in the future and it has become a part of your past. So we stand on the failures of our past reaching to our future. Insert scripture. I count not myself to have apprehended but forgetting those things which are behind and looking to those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And we lay aside, this is the remix, we lay aside the weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, looking to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Two very important things in those two different passages of scripture that we have to keep our eyes on Jesus and not on the failure. Keep our eyes on Jesus and not the challenge that we either overcame or were defeated by in that moment. So failure is not final. It opens us up to the fortitude of victory in the future. So, so it says this in, in Psalm 37. I, I hope I have your, your, your attention in this because the steps of a good man or woman, the righteous people of God, are ordered, established. You know, you, you call up, um, is it Grubhub or Hub Grub? I don't know. I, you, you call them up and you say, you say, hey, I'd like to order, and you place your order of what it is that you'd like to have delivered. God has ordered some things that is being delivered into your life and we're rebuking and binding and casting down and denying and, and, and signifying that that ain't God when God already ordered the steps of his children. It's getting personal now because what I thought was evil, God says, no, it's all good. It's all good and it's working together for good because you love me. And if you're called according to my purpose, you're going to have some challenges. You're going to have some trials. You're going to have some situations and they don't fit in a milk crate. So when we think about the hell that we've gone through, it's so that we don't have to go to hell. I know I said hell. This is viewer discretion advised. But it's real. It's real when we break it down and say, you know what? I done been through a whole lot of stuff. I was contemplating my years and years and years of life and struggle and challenge, turmoil. I mean, and you can just start using words to describe how bad it's been. But then when I weighed it against the good 
and all of the greatness and all of the, the, the power and the love and the accomplishments, the achievements, the things by which I can give thanks for, that outweighs any negativity that could have ever occurred. Stop and think about it. I got a headache. You got a head so that it can ache. <laughs> oh, my tooth hurt. How many teeth you got? Because somebody's got less. Somebody wish they had the teeth you got. And even if they're just the teeth you have left, thank you for the teeth. That might hurt. So you get the understanding that we can give thanks in all things, every circumstance, every situation. You say, oh, well, you're just, you're just gaslighting me to just kind of, no, 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 no. I want us to understand what the scripture is saying. The steps of the righteous people are ordered of the Lord and he delights in his ways. He delights, God delights in your ways. He, delight, he doesn't delight in your fall. He delights in your getting up. He delights in your ways. He delights in the fact that he's already ordered your steps. And when you walk in his ways, then you'll make even your enemies to be at peace with you. Your enemies will approach you with, excuse me, let me move out of your way. The roadblocks will seem to dissipate in some way. I believe that every valley will be exalted and every mountain will be made low. And the righteousness of God will flow through the streets like water. All because what God has promised and what God has said and what God does for us is insurmountable to these challenges. They don't measure up. They're not the same. The challenges are not to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us because the earnest expectation of every creature is waiting for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. That's in the book of Romans. And so when we look at this, it says the Lord upholds him with his hand. I got to think about that for a minute because God can use anything and everything to uphold us when we are overtaking. God can use anything and everything to uphold us when we're facing challenges. God can do anything necessary to help us overcome everything that comes our way. Anything. But he chose in this particular instance to uphold us with his hand. I'm going to take one of the challenges here. Which one should I take? I'll take a challenge. This is one of our challenges or one of the elements of our challenge, and I'm holding it in my hand. I'm not holding it on my head. I'm not carrying it in my heart. I don't have it on my back. It's not attached to my foot. It's not in any way inhibiting me. Why? Because I hold it in my hand. And because I'm holding it in my hand, I get to choose what I'm going to do with it. In the case of a challenge, I can choose to toss what I was holding in my hand. But in God's instance, when he holds his children in his hands, he draws them close to him because we not only have a place in his hand, but we have a place in his heart. We are the heart of God in the earth. And so challenges are to be tossed, not people. Circumstances can be tossed, not people. I think about how the word of God stands so strong in situations where there's darkness. It's hard for us to even consider now when we think about it. How, how come I didn't think about that? Why, why was that never made clear to me? I want to encourage you in, in this way. I want you to look at some more scripture. Let's get some more scripture here. I want to encourage you in this way to where every situation that you're facing, everyone is the opportunity for you to access the secrets, the secrets. Now, I don't want you to tell anybody this, but there's some, some things in here that the world out there can't seem to apply. And because they can't apply those things, they don't have the victory in situations. You know, you've gone through things and your coworkers will tell you, your neighbors will tell you, go ask your neighbors what you think about what I was just going through. Just get an, just get an interview with him. I hope you've been enjoying um, the word on the streets because it's been some really good conversation and challenging dialogue about how people view what somebody else may take for granted. It's been a really good dialogue about opening up a conversation about God being real and everything that God does, he does on purpose and that there's a purpose and a plan and that this isn't just a happenstance experience and we're spinning around the moon all these times and then and we come you know, to a halt. Let me show you something in scripture, and this is one of the secrets. I'm going to share it as a revealed secret. It is in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. It says, 
And you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. You say, well, what does that have to do with anything? That is 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, the 11th verse. Paul's writing to the church at Corinth, and, and he's writing something to them about their ability to do something that will trigger something that will have an impact to make something else happen. Their ability to do something, to trigger something, to make something happen. This is really important as I wrap it up because it's important for us to know that God doesn't just haphazardly shoot opportunities out there. And if you take them, you take them. If you don't, you don't. No, Paul is showing through his lifestyle. He says, what you've done for me or what you do for someone who's preaching and pushing and teaching the gospel, what you do for ministry, what you do for the church of the living God, not just a building, we're talking an organism. What you do literally makes a difference and it gives reason for thanksgiving to be activated is what he's saying. What you do causes gratitude. Hmm. What you do causes gratitude. I didn't say favor, favorability. I didn't say privilege. I didn't even say access. We'll get to the access part in just a minute. But it literally triggers something. It's called cause and effect. It causes action, react. It's called action, reaction. So you give and the person is triggered now to say thanks. You say, well, what does that have to do with the power of God in a person's life? We are empowered by utilizing this gratitude that we have. That's what makes us different than animals or any other creature. We have the capacity, after having been a leper, to come back and say thanks. But not all of them will. Ten are healed, one comes back. We have the gratitude capacity that an animal doesn't have because they'll eat and move on to the next thing, carnivorous or herbivore. They don't stop and give thanks for these berries I'm about to receive. They just look for the next bunch of berries. They don't stop and give thanks for this. You know, a bear takes a trout or a salmon out of the water and holds it up and says, for this scrumptious meal I'm about to receive, I give you thanks. No, Yogi the bear eats whatever it is he's going to eat and keeps moving. And that's because animals and other creatures are all waiting for us to trigger the gratitude. Once we trigger Thanksgiving, something happens. You say, well, what happens? I've got to share more scripture to let you know what happened. I hope you're being blessed by this. And if you are, drop something in the, in the, in the uh, chat there. So, so in 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, two verses, verse 4 and 5, just two verses. It says, for everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with Thanksgiving. Everything God created is good and is not to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. Some people take this and make their own doctrines. You know, well, you can drink this, smoke this, eat that, sleep with this because everything is good. And that's not what the scripture is saying. Don't misinterpret the fact that what God created good for us is good for us. And what he created good for an animal is good for an animal. And you're not an animal. And I use animal as an example. I mean, animals are wonderful creatures. I sure hope don't nobody who love animals come at me. Because I got, I got something for that too. Because <laughs> some people want to love animals more than they love people. Some people love a dog more than they love the, the person. I was going to say the dog they're living with. The person that they attribute to as having dog-like creatures. I mean, uh, there's a furry dog and then there's a human that acts like a dog. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Dogs can be tamed. All right. So let me share this. If the scripture tells us this, if the scripture tells us this in, in 1 Timothy, Paul's writing to him, he says, for everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. All right, so now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere with the understanding that everything is good and that we are to give thanks for everything that we have. Paul also writes to the Corinthians, he says, I always thank my God for you because of his grace given to you in Christ Jesus. Now, when I was doing a study on Thanksgiving, and, and I do one every year around, around the, the, the November season or the November month, I thought about the literal scores and scores of time that the word thanks or Thanksgiving shows up in the Bible. More than 149 times the word thanksgiving shows up. 
<laughs> you know some of them. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures. Think for a moment about how the relationship that we have with God is based on our ability to recognize who he is and to give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Wow. In all things, give thanks. We know that one. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called with one body and be ye thankful. So, so thanksgiving is the secret weapon that gives us access because it triggers not our humanity. It triggers our relationship with deity. That's how you know when someone is loving and serving God because they show graciousness and gratitude. When someone is not loving and serving God, they don't even say thanks. I appreciate it and this helps to meet my need. Notice at the beginning of the message, I gave you those three steps or levels that literally give birth to relationship. So if we give thanks unto the Lord by just simply saying, thanks God, then that's what you got. When you say, thanks God, I really appreciate you you got closer and then you say, thanks God, I appreciate you for. It's a weapon because the weapons of our warfare are not natural. They're not physical. They're not carnal according to the scripture. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. If this is a weapon of warfare, if thanksgiving becomes your weapon of warfare, thank you, Father, for giving me what I need to overthrow the enemy and his camp. The enemy and everything that he's got. The enemy and all that he throws at me. Every situation, I can toss it out of the way because thanksgiving empowers me beyond that which the natural eye can see. I want to challenge even Bible students. Thanksgiving is not one of the fruit of the Spirit. It just simply is a natural attribute that even a heathen can have if he or she decides to develop it. It's fortitude, it's magnitude, it's aptitude, and it determines our altitude. The more thanksgiving, the higher we go in God, the deeper we are. But without gratitude, we're just simply looking for the next thing. The next set of berries, like an animal, would go foraging through life. We're not foraging. We're living by faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Faith that I'm grateful for what I have and I'm grateful for what I know God can do and what he's going to do. So with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the very God of peace will keep our hearts and our minds in perfect peace. Those whose minds are stayed on him. Let's pray over this. Father, we thank you for every challenge. We thank you for every circumstance in life that we faced in 2021. We thank you because we can walk through our circumstances and our situations knowing that we're more than conquerors and that they didn't overtake us, but we stand above them. We thank you because we're able to dismantle step by step the very plot and the plan of the enemy as he built up walls to destroy us, as he built up barriers to stand in our way, we are more than conquerors and we have victory. We have victory that passes our own understanding. It's, it's wisdom, it's, it's the power of God. It's through your word, even the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our pathway. So I pray for someone who has still yet challenges who's maybe even taken a fall. I pray for restoration. I pray that they'd be restored in this spirit of meekness and we consider ourselves lest we also be tempted and fall. So Father, bless that man who's real down on himself right now, that woman who's really hard on judging what she's done, that condemnation that should not be there. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ because the law of life in Christ makes us free from the law of sin and death. So, Father, send your freedom, send your victories, victories, yes, victories, plural, victories, more than one, daily, 
so that we can draw closer to you and become everything you've called us to be. So we open our hearts, Father, to receive our brothers and our sisters. We open our hearts to receive those who are without that need to be drawn in. Father, let nothing, nothing stand in the way of our love for you. So we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this day in time, this, po this point in the year we, we've come to. Thank you for every mountain, every valley, every shadow of death where we had no need to fear because you were with us. Your rod, your staff protected and comforted us. And we, we're grateful. Thank you, 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 Lord. Mm, my, 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 my. So I pray right now that the Holy Spirit that is moving in that home, that, that Holy Spirit that is moving right now on this person that is wondering what's happening, I pray that you would manifest fully, manifest fully, Father, on them and allow them to know that you're within them and that through acceptance of your Son, Jesus Christ, salvation is made complete. If we open our mouths and confess with our hearts and believe, confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that God has raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved for it's with our heart that we believe under righteousness and then out of the mouth confession simple confession is made unto salvation save and deliver today today in your son Jesus's name we pray and for that we say thank you hallelujah so father as we close out this series and this message I just pray that something said would trigger the attitude of gratitude in your people and that we would learn this as a secret weapon secret weapon of warfare to overthrow the enemy in Jesus name and all who agreed said amen. Listen, thank you for being a part of the message series. I pray that everything that you've heard will some way, in some way, trigger this attitude of gratitude um, so that as we close out 2021, we can enter into 2022 with a voice of victory and with a testimony of having overcome so many things. Here at Grace for the Nations Church, it's our mission to reach the diverse people of the world by teaching biblical principles and life application of scripture. Despite the present day challenges that face individuals and families, even in our communities, we believe there's hope. So until next time, God bless you.